There's a new film called Life by yes. Anton Corbin, who, as you know, was a photographer turned filmmaker. Actually, he's been on the programme before talking about, I think he was on when we were talking about Control, Sam Riley, I think yes. we had on as well talking about that. So um, this is about the creation of the iconic Dennis Stock portraits of James Dean uh, in the 1950s. You know, when you see all those portraits of James Dean, you know, walking along in New York in the rain, the stuff of him back in Fairmount with, you know, playing congas amongst the cattle all basically all those classic iconic images of james dean of which of course there aren't that many because james dean's career was uh, you know sadly short-lived so the uh, story is basically dennis stock attempting to get james dean played by um dane dehan uh, dennis stock played by robert patterson to um to agree to do the photographs and to be the subject of a life magazine photo essay here's a clip what do we have to do exactly well, I mean, what do you mean, what do you have to do? We have, we have to take some pictures. It's like a photo essay. Photo essay. We tell a story with, with images, like you do in movies, except this time it's about you and it's not a character. Oh. Do I like the sound of that? Jimmy, man, it's, it's life. Come on. That means no studio shots, no lighting, none of that crap. No, no I, I want to help you. Well, I'm helping you, man. Yeah, I get that. Look, I, I admit, I want to get him first. That's exactly what I just told life. The public, they got to get to know you. The... I know, I'm just not sure how much I want to speed up that process. Well, you just got to trust my intentions. Uh, Dennis, look, I'm, I'm just lazy as all. I, I got to go. I'll call you. You know, the funny thing is that in that clip is summed up all the things that are right and indeed the many things that are wrong with this film. So let's start with the positive stuff. I think Rob Pattinson actually does a very good job as Dennis Stock. It's very interesting to see him once again in his post-Twilight incarnations playing completely against the sort of, you know, the matinee idol uh, pretty boy image that he had and doing actually doing of the two things the more complicated role because obviously James Dean is the movie star, James Dean is the icon and Robert Pattinson is a pretty iconic figure but he's not. He's playing Dennis Stock. He's playing in this film. Incidentally, there's been some from those who knew Dennis Stock complaining that the film actually doesn't a accurately represent him. But in the film, he's difficult and awkward and um, he's sort of pursuing Dean's character because he knows that what he wants is an assignment that will make the both of them more famous. But he has his, you know, his own reason for doing it, which is that he thinks it will turn him into an artist. Meanwhile, you have Dane DeHaan doing this version of James Dean, which for me was a problem. And many of the reviews have said it's incredible how much Dane DeHaan actually looks, looks like James Dean. The problem for me was that he didn't, but that's not the key thing, because we've said before, you know, Sir Anthony Hopkins didn't look anything like Richard Nixon, but he still manages to play Nixon. The problem for me with the Dean thing is, firstly, as you heard from that clip, they had a little Dean Song Song version of James Dean's voice, in which is falling asleep. Oh, or stoned. Bit. Well, no, but it's. I mean, of if, course, if, if you, you know, if you listen to, I mean, Dean's Dean did have a particular kind of delivery, but what that sounds like to me is a mimicry of the delivery. It sounds. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the press notes about saying this is not an impersonation, but so much of it is. And one of the reasons for that is because the narrative has to go from one iconic image to another iconic image to another iconic image. So you know, we have to get Dean out wearing the overcoat, walking you know, away from Times Square in the rain. We have to get to that point. And so when you, if you think about the film storyboarded, it would be this, it would be like the photo essay with, you know, how do you get from portrait A to portrait B to portrait C? The other thing is there's a, there's a James Dean hair issue here, which is, I've said this before, James Dean had hair like a Thunderbird puppet. And the most brilliant thing about James Dean was his hair always looked ruffled. He had very, very thick hair. You can try and make your hair go like James Dean. It ain't gonna happen unless, you, unless you're James Dean. I don't know what it is, but he's very, very thick hair. In this particular case, Dane Hart, every single shot looks like his hair has been quaffed to an inch of its life to look slightly dishevelled. And in a way, the whole sort of central problem for me about that performance was Dane Hart's got very baby face. Uh, James Dean didn't. His hair looks quaffed. James Dean actually never did. The vocal mannerisms sound rehearsed and practiced. And James Dean always just sounded a little bit kind of offy. And those things shouldn't be a problem. But what's a problem is that when you start noticing them, you realise that there isn't anything else. You are looking at the costume, you are looking at the hair, you are looking at the stuff. Meanwhile, we get, you know, a, a cameo, well, it's a secondary performance by Sir Ben Kingsley as Jack Warner, which is absolutely full wiggy slaptastic. And it is a real sort of pantomime turn. And then against all that, you have Robert Pattinson 
absolutely downplaying everything as this difficult, awkward, schlubby character, actually not a million miles away from some of the roles that he's, that he's, I mean, in, you know, in, in, when he's working with Cronenberg, he's played these characters that are, that are awkward and spiky and not attractive. And I like the fact that he's doing that. The, I think the major disappointment for me was that it didn't ever, it felt inert. It felt like a series of photographs that we had to get between. There's a thing at the very beginning when there's this lovely slow-mo image of a filament in a red light bulb heating up and you, and you it's kind of promises, you know, unseen truths, you know, unveiled moments. And then the film actually really doesn't deliver on those. So it's not without style and panache, which you would expect from Anton Corbin. It's not without a, a good performance from Robert Pattinson. I couldn't get my head around uh, the Dane DeHaan performance for exactly the reason that it says in the thing it says it's not doing it, it's not doing an impression, but it really felt like that. And in the end, you come out a little bit none the wiser. And considering how potentially sort of interesting that story is, the film never really gets to grips with what it is that makes those portraits iconic and what it is that's in that relationship between the, those two young men that makes it interesting.